<sighs> Ridiculous. <laughs> You guys, you guys, you missed, <laughs> you missed a lot. Uh, let's just say, no, I'm just going to say it. You're this, one over, <laughs> this one over here comes up with, first of all, a block of cheese. Like, I swear to God, it was like, she's like, what? It was only like this big. Okay. This is kind of a big, no, this is this, it was this no, big. No, 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 whatever. You're dreaming. <laughs> it was a big, it was a big piece of cheese. It was like this big. It's not cut into pieces or anything. No, no, not cut into pieces. She just comes up, sits down, gnaws on a block of cheese, eats all of it, mind you. And I'm like, good. what if I wanted to have some cheese after the show? I guess I don't get that kind. Nope. And then she like grabs my uh, delicious beef jerky. I was hungry. That was my lunch. Uh, she's like, oh, I'm going to try this. She takes a big piece, puts it in her mouth, eats it, proceeds to almost choke on it. So it's hacking like she's hacking up a hair. And I realized I really don't like beef jerky. I don't care if it's Corey's thing. And I'm like, Corey, Corey I, I love like, you. You could have tasted a little like tiny piece to decide if you like it instead of eating a big piece and then be like, eh, uh. and, then like she, and then she and then she sums it all up by loudly sucking her teeth. <laughs> I wanted to make sure I didn't have beef jerky in my teeth. Piercing my show. eardrums. <laughs> <sighs> rude. Ridiculous. She's rude. Yeah, you want to follow that up with a cricket? No, I'm good. Get those away from me. <laughs> right away. Get it away. Get it. What is up, guys? It's Sunday. What's Sunday? My favorite show. Sunday Live Hall. Apparently, it's somebody else. Who, who somebody said, I think it was uh uh I think I saw somebody, Jennifer Buckeye Mom 82 said surf it's favorite show. She's watching it while she's listing and everything. Anyway, guys, uh, it's Sunday, so it's Sunday live haul. We got lots of cool stuff to share with you guys. We've actually had a pretty good week of sales. Um, it's getting better. Actually, it's more of like the volume has gone up because bo I think both of us had a dip in our um, average sale price this last week. Yeah. Um, and our costs were way up, uh, like mm -hmm. shipping and cost of goods and stuff like that. So we'll show those numbers in a little bit. But we had a pretty decent week. I barely did any sourcing because I already have plenty of stuff. And so we didn't, and I'm still not up to doing like my regular, uh, normal Thursday thing where I go to all the savers. Definitely not up to that. So I didn't do any sourcing this week, but then we went to, um, a few estate sales on Friday. Mm -hmm. She got me to go along with her. I only got a couple of things. Um, so I got, got some good stuff. Yeah. So today is really Vicky's day to shine as my far as the show. Yeah, it's her haul show because she found all kinds of awesome stuff. Mm -hmm. And then she came home and she was looking everything up. And it was like, you had like a home run in like every place that you went. Mm -hmm. So almost, I think there's only one item out of everything you got that wasn't yep. like a really good buy. So, uh, ooh, home baked potato chips. Ooh. That's my other favorite kind of food. I'm going to eat some Cheese of that. Cheese and potatoes, my two favorite things. That's why I'm a fat girl. It's all right. <laughs> hey, I love cheese too. Okay. Okay. Maybe I was going to have some of that delicious uh caramelized onion cheese which actually was pretty tasty it was kind of like the it kind of tastes like a fancy french onion dip tasted flavored cheese it was really good at least i remember it being really good <laughs> since i don't get to have casey it is now sending me presents allison says casey's security selection of cheeses and homemade meat <laughs> products to send off to Ooh. vicky we love our presents from alaska yeah, for uh, sure. Okay, so what, what did I see back there? Oh, I saw uh, Noelle, Farm Girl Scavenger, who's uh, catching us live, who said that she's going to get me some Tillamook cheese. We actually visited well, listen, the Tillamook factory. The Tillamook cheese factory. Listen, we are uh, actually today, after the show, I'm going to uh, start working on figuring out what exact dates we're going to be in Oregon in February. We're thinking around the last week, so I need to go. Um, I actually have to go and like rebook the tickets uh, cause my dad had gotten his tickets, but then now we have to transfer them. Um, so we will know for sure. And we will be having some sort of meetup. I know Noel, uh, Wade is, yeah, and Wade is putting together a meetup in the, uh, the Portland area. Yeah. So that will be, we got to figure out um, our dates as soon as possible. So we're going to be doing that today. I'm going to hopefully get those tickets booked today. Um, so we actually know. So if you guys, if any of you are in the Pacific Northwest, whether you're somewhere near Portland or not too far away, you want to come hang out with us there is going to be something coming up um and you'll get to hang out with uh with some other peeps like noelle and some really like cool wait so mm -hmm. it should be super fun yeah naomi close to washington state depending on where you are in washington absolutely portland is uh is just a skip hop and a jump away pretty much pretty much mm -hmm. uh, liz Renee says i i need a, a shirt that says i survived the cricket tasting i need a shirt that says that 
I don't know, I kind of like my the one I have right now. It's Mo Honey Mo Problems. It's my my uh Okay, so awesome. uh yeah, Very we're going to uh, Wade and Side Hustle Pros. That's who else is uh putting it together. Oh, okay, cool. Cool. Very cool. Yeah, awesome. So if you could follow them on the YouTubes. I know uh both of the both of those channels have like way more subscribers than us, so um, it should be for a really fun gathering. So that'll be super cool. Mm -hmm. um, Martha, you missed the cricket fest. If you just go watch Friday's go show. Go back and watch Friday's show. You'll be horrified. You'll be horrified. You'll horrified. Watch Friday's show. I did eat a bacon and cheese flavored cricket. All right. Can we stop? Get them away. Uh, it's done. So it's sorry. Anyway, guys. So yeah, so that's coming up. So uh, hopefully uh, our next show will be able to say, um, and I'm sure I'll, we'll probably put something in the boss group. We'll say for sure what the dates are that we're going to be there because we're mm -hmm. visiting my family. Um, so it should be super awesome. Anyway. Um, oh, hey, what's up? Rachel Toledo. Holy Toledo. First time I'm watching. Sure she's never time. heard that before. You shut your mouth. Maybe she's from Toledo. I don't know. Um, anyway, she says first time watching this live. So that's super awesome. All right. Cool. So first things first, I guess we should do our using where we have our fancy uh, chart of numbers that um, there are little spreadsheets that Teresa put together for us, mm -hmm. Teresa Cox, because she is a little bit obsessed with numbers. Mm -hmm. She is numbers geek on the Instagram. So um, we'll go ahead and share those. Do you want to go first? No, you can go first. You want me to go first? Okay. And this time you even put the right date on there. I yours. did. Aren't you proud of me? I'm very, very proud of you. All right. So yeah, so definitely, I think I have like 10 more orders uh, than I did the week before, but my average sale price did go down quite a bit and my net profit went, um, percentage went down. But anyway, so here is for the week ending yesterday, um, eBay outgoing orders, 43, Etsy, four. Um, Etsy's still kind of being being real super slow for me. Um, so total outgoing orders forty seven. Sorry, the camera's trying to trying to focus there. Um, but eBay gross sales uh, one thousand eight hundred thirty nine dollars and forty six cents. Look at that, I can read numbers backwards. Uh, my Etsy gross sales one hundred ninety one. So my total gross sales for the week two thousand. $30 and 46 cents. So that's actually, um, those, that's the number I'm really happy with that. I would love it if I averaged that year round. Um, so for me, a gross of 2000 per week, I'm pretty, if I could average that for the whole year, I'd be pretty happy. Yeah. I'd be okay with that if that were my gross every week too, yep. but not, not mine. Yeah. Mine so are, mine are not as good. I think it's because my net was so bleh. Yeah. So my shipping is, uh, it was two forty four forty two. Um, so you'll see that that Vicky, because she does hard goods, her shipping costs are way higher than mine. Um, and then you'll see my fees. Now I actually added in my uh, for promoted listings. I've only been doing my eBay fees, but I realized last week, like, oh, I really need to be adding in my Etsy promoted listing fees because I'm paying like an average of probably ten bucks a day, uh, close to ten dollars a day on Etsy for promoted listings. So between Etsy and eBay, my promoted listing fees were one hundred and seventeen dollars and fifty cents. So my total fees all together are three hundred sixty-one dollars and sixteen cents. Um, so that's pretty high for my fees. I think your fees are quite a bit lower than mine. Uh, my cost of goods three hundred and ten dollars. I think your cost of goods are probably like half of mine mm -hmm. because I do um, a fair amount of uh, you know retail arbitrage and stuff like that, and online arbitrage. So I got some new items that some of that brings up my costs a lot. Um, so my total net sales for the week is $1,114.88. And then I see your little face. I'm looking. And then my average sale price is $43.20. I think last week I was over $50 for my average sale price. I actually did I hand wrote my little percentage. You know, usually I'm 60 to 65% net, only 55% this week. So you can see that that means my costs were up pretty high, pretty, pretty high. So a lot of that has to do with all the fees. Um, um, and, yep. and Kimberly, is this mostly clothes for Katie? It's all clothes and shoes. Yes. yes. That's all yes. she sells. Uh, yeah. So I just said the net profit. Yeah. Okay. So JG saw that. I just saw the net profit. Now, of course, those net sales, that doesn't take into account like all of the other costs, you know, all the other overhead costs like um, taxes, uh, you know, mileage, fuel, mm -hmm. um, phone, internet, you know, all the costs that kind of go into, uh, selling, um, yeah. it doesn't include those, but it just includes all the costs directly, uh, to that. So, so I guess we'll, we'll jump into mine. Mine, are, I mean, mine are lower than Katie's and, uh, which is not good. Uh, it's still not good, but 
they're getting there. I but mean, your net is almost identical. Right. And that's not very really good either. So <laughs> my net is generally about 65, sometimes even 70% because I have such a low, um, I have a high profit margin because I have a low uh, cost of goods for the most part. Mm -hmm. So I've been taking a lot of or, uh, offers that I wouldn't normally take just because sales have been so slow due to not listing, due to her accident, all that kind of stuff. So we're just starting to get back into the swing of things. So for me, um, I did 50 sales on eBay, three on Etsy for a total of 1856.86. Um, that's a total gross. My shipping was 328. My promoted listing fees are $51 and change. My total fees, which are like PayPal and eBay fees, are about $245 if you count that with the... Yeah, so my fees listing. were over $100 more than yours, but your shipping costs were a little mm -hmm. higher. And my cost of goods are low. My cost of goods is $160. Half of mine. So my total net is about $1,075, which is way too low for a weekly uh, total for me. Um, I need to net far more than that to pay my bills. My average sale price is about $35, which is pretty low. Yeah, because uh, yours is usually around four. Well, Kimberly Cogs is cost of goods. Yeah, that's what Cogs stands for. Um, so my net of a thousand seventy-five or so is is not real good, uh, but it's getting there. It's getting back up there. Someone asked, "Are you talking about?" Um, let's see. Do you see a difference between last year, January, and this year, Naomi? We really can't quantify last year to this year because. Last year we were both working full time, and this year, due to Katie's accident, neither one of us have been working very I am, much at all. I am down compared to last year a little bit, but not a ton. And uh, I'm down about forty percent. She's down a lot. I'm down a little bit now. I will say, you know, for me, I have not been listing anywhere near where I, you know, I'm listing like I'm happy if I get five to ten new listings a day, and it's still like I yesterday for the first time I took pictures in like a month. And I only took pictures of like 10 t-shirts. Um, so I really would uh, say that my sales right now have everything to do with the fact that I've been listing daily, even though it's only been a handful of things. So I think it really shows what a difference it makes that daily activity. And then there's the fact that I do have like 1700 items in my store. So it's like, you have to have that daily activity to kind of keep things going. And then you also have to have a decent inventory of yeah. good stuff that people want. My so. sales are down uh, more than 50% from last month and about 40% from last year. And it is entirely due to not getting uh, things listed. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, that's, that's really all it is. It's, and I expect that we'll be, you know, getting back into the swing of things over the next month to six weeks. But right now it's, it's, it is what it is. Yep. Yeah. So Naomi, Naomi listing is very important. Like uh, having that like activity and the active, activity, whatever, every single day, even on Etsy, because Etsy, you know, my eBay's bouncing back. My Etsy is way down. Like I was up to, I was doing like over 3000 a month on Etsy. I'd finally like gotten over that point. And now it's like half of that. So it's dropped way, way, way down. Um, so it seems like Etsy needs a little bit more like constant love. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so yeah, and if over a thousand a week is nice income, it is. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not saying that it's not. But again, everybody has a different level of income that they need to survive and to pay their bills, depending on cost of living and where they live and things like that. So for me, that's not enough. Uh, you know, you yeah. know, I can't live on a thousand dollars a week. I have car payment, rent, bills. You know, there's a million things. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so Allison wants to know, is it worth it to have your listings viewed in another country? I see eBay offers England as a choice. So I have everything on .com. And so people from other countries can go to .com and they can purchase directly from .com. But it also does get sent out to other sites. And so it will, um, you know, I don't really know like how it all, the, the differences and how it all works because I've had people buy from me like from eBay France and eBay whatever. Um, and I, I don't It's like when you look up your own things, you're going to see, some people will shop.com I think. And I think it's like when you look up your own things, you're going to see offers from other countries too for mm -hmm. something that you're looking. So looking yeah, so at. I'm not entirely sure, but I, I just do the regular listing on eBay. I don't even click because you can click on the little thing just to list it on other sites. I don't do that. I don't either. Um, and I sell 20% of my stuff goes overseas. Mm -hmm. I do really well. It really depends on what you have um, and what stuff people buy overseas. Um, I think my stuff is very desirable because mm -hmm. I have a lot of vintage men's menswear. 
So yeah, Kara, I agree. Uh, seller hub percentage up and down only takes into account the categories you have the most listings in. So it's not a true percentage of up or down. It's tough. I agree. That's the same with me because I have one offs. I go based off of my numbers from last year because I do, I do have those. So I'm, that's where I'm telling you my yeah. numbers are down. I wish they would change that because it really is silly that they, it's only the two categories because that shifts all the time. Now for me, my main two categories that it takes from are jackets and t-shirts. So actually for me, I think it is fairly accurate accurate because I consistently sell the same types of stuff. Whereas you, because you sell so many different things. Mine is almost always, it's always uh, something different. dress shirts and dresses, which are two categories that yes, I sell a lot in, but nowhere near my two biggest categories. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. Allison, most people know, I think most people internationally who like to shop on eBay know to go to ebay.com to get a better variety of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So mostly it's going to be ebay.com. Anyway, um, yeah, sales are definitely normally over and down past the holiday. It, but for me, January has always been almost as strong as December. Uh, and, and I have 12 years of 13 years of, of holiday season to go through as far as a seller to compare. So, so Sharon's asking, talking about how the, the Ohio meetup, they were talking about the, the shutdown and how it influences sales. And I think that's right. You know, yes, they're, you know, the, the numbers I've seen crazy the numbers on. I've seen, it's something like 800,000 people that are employed that are being affected by this. So yes, like, so those people probably aren't going and shopping on eBay, but I'm sure it does have a bigger effect. Like people who are worried that maybe they're not going to get their tax returns in time or just overall people having feelings of uncertainty about what's going, you know, what the economy is going to look like going forward. I'm sure that all has an effect. And again, it probably depends on like the kinds of things that you sell. Like if your mm -hmm. demographic that you sell to is maybe like older quote unquote, wiser people that are more careful with careful with their money, it might have an impact. Right. Whereas if you're somebody like me where I sell like a lot of like vintage streetwear and it's some young kid who's like blowing his last 50 bucks on a t-shirt or something like that, are they, gonna care. are they like paying attention to what's going on in the economy? Probably not. So it all depends, but I'm sure it has some impact. It's got to, right? Yeah. Martha, did I, I did not list the Alfred Shaheen dress yet. Nope. I just got it last week and I'm about two weeks behind on uh, photographs for my inventory. So uh, I believe Dana got photographs of that this week. So it'll, uh, the other, the other day. So it will be listed within the next week or so. Yep. 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 All right. So do we want to go ahead and look at our sold yeah. highlights for the last week? Let's I think we got do some it. cool stuff. I'm going to go ahead and do a little screen share. Here we go. What you got? Um, okay. So this isn't anything spectacular, but I did want to say I listed this this week. I paid $1.50 each for these. I have three boxes. I had one customer purchase all three boxes, so I sold them for $60, and it was $4.50 was what they cost me, and it was under a pound to ship in a box. Nice. So I thought that was a pretty good ROI. I picked those up at Savers. They're just these plastic little plug-on, clip-on candles that they attach to your regular um, mm -hmm. lights. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, and, you know, Allison says, I think there's a lot more sellers selling these days. Yeah, there's always going to be people jumping on board to sell. Um, I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. I think it does affect uh, kind of your basic, like if you're thinking about clothing, your basic kind of bread and butter type stuff. I think it does affect that because usually those are the things that people are immediately going to to buy and sell. Sure. And the market gets flooded. I do think clothing is super oversaturated. But if you build um, a really good knowledge base of like what sells and what doesn't sell and kind of the higher end stuff and higher average sale price stuff. Right. Um, you're going to do okay. I mean, I definitely think it's more work now than it was when I started to sell. For me too. Sure. Um, but with the type of stuff that I sell, it, it doesn't affect me too badly, but you know, it definitely has an impact. Um, okay. So my first one's actually going to be three in one because I, I had somebody buy three items from me. I actually had a couple of different multi sales, um, this last week. I had a guy buy a couple of satin bomber jackets, vintage bomber jackets. Um, and then this person bought three things from me and I thought it was pretty good. Uh, this t-shirt I actually had for a while. Um, it even has like a uh, light stain on the back, back of the sleeve. I don't even know why I priced this one so high. I probably would have priced this down. You can see the original is $49.99, but I have a 30% off sale. Uh, looking at this now, I'm like, why didn't I price this at $39.99? Um, in which case it would have been on sale for $27.99. But hey, somebody bought it for $34.99. Uh, and then 
same person bought this t-shirt that I've had for a while. Another just basic uh, vintage single stitch t-shirt sold this one for $27.99. Um, and then the third thing I bought, which I just got in Phoenix, right? Mm -hmm. I was super excited about this. I thought it was awesome. Uh, this really cool vintage sweatshirt I sold for $34.99. So basically they bought these all at the sale price. Uh, so I think it totaled like $98 um, for these three items all together. And they, like I can just put those all together. Those three will probably all fit in a padded flat rate mailer. So it's going to save me a little money on the shipping. Um, so I was super stoked to be able to sell those all at the same time. All right. Next one for you. Uh, this one took a little while to sell, and I can actually tell based on my background on this photos, on these photos, and my mannequin. So I don't even have this mannequin anymore because she used to keep falling over. Um, anyway, so it sold for $66.97. It's kind of one of those, that's yes, that's the back of the dress. And if you other picture that you just had, go left. That is the front of the dress. Ooh, it is boy. like a Jennifer Lopez cut down to there type Ooh, of dress. Oh boy. Um, I paid about $10 for it when I bought it. I knew it was a good uh, brand name, but it did sit for a while. I mean, first of all, A, you've got to have the right body to wear that thing. I hope the woman that bought it does. But it sold for $67. It's um, really pretty. It is a pretty dress. I, I could never wear that in a bazooka. You're just going to have to use some double-sided tape, that's all. Yes, there's, they've, they've got to have some double-sided tape and a real tight body and some pert boobies to wear that thing. But God bless them. What's up, Alexis in the house? Uh, so Monique Graves says that she's a new follower, tried to catch us live last week, but only caught the last five minutes. And she thinks we're pretty, pretty cool. Thanks. Pretty cool. We try. Uh, she and her uh, wife do eBay, and she just started, or the wife just started posh. Very cool. Um, do you have anything else to say about this one? Nope, that's it. Okay, so my next one, I was pretty stoked about this one because uh, I showed this in a haul video. And when I got it, Vicky was a naysayer. She didn't think it, she thought it was not, it did not add any value or make it, um, I guess, give it resale value well, had to this have. Weird off center airbrushed or hand painted thing on the back. I just, well, it looks it like they on. used, it looks like they used a stencil or something. Um, so it was up for, I think, over a month, but not too crazy long. And I had it listed. It was on sale for 105 bucks. I had somebody make an offer for 80 and I believe it's going to California. So it's going to be super, super cheap to, to uh, sell it, but it's a military jacket. And then, yeah, it had somebody had to like customize it and put this, um, this symbol on the back of it. Uh, but anyway, I sold it for 80 bucks guys. So, yeah, we're not blurry guys. So if you're seeing something as blurry, just hit refresh on your screen. Um, oh, wait, yeah. I, we are a well, little that, blurry. But, that, but that, we might need to refresh it too. So just try refreshing and see if it will help, Allison. Because um, a lot of times that can happen. Uh, anyway, yeah, so sold that for 80 bucks. Cool. Whoop, whoop. Don't you feel sorry for... I, I doubted you. There? I, I, I'm Why sorry would you doubt for doubting you? you. I should never, you? ever doubt you, ever. <laughs> So this isn't anything uh, super home run, but I did talk about this in a haul video a few weeks ago. It sold for the price that you see there. I'm running a deep uh, sale in my store at 33% off as, as high as I go. Uh, but this is a new with tags. It's just a brand name that a lot of people maybe not have heard of. Uh, it sold for $47. I paid about $5 for it. It's just a cool, it kind of grabbed me because it looked like something Lily Pulitzer actually because it's so um, bright. The colors are so bright. Yeah. Uh, but it's not. It's Gretchen Scott, and it's a higher end brand, and it sold for forty seven dollars. And it's really light. It's very, you know, it's first class shipping. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know what why your TV's blurry, but I just refreshed our screen um, on our feed, and it looks like it's clear. So I don't know if anyone else is having that problem, but hopefully it will look a little bit better. It might just be uh, something going on with your interwebs. Um, anyway, all right. So my next one is this Obermeyer ski snowboard jacket. It's a vintage 90s. Um, I had this up for a little while. Uh, but, you know, I, I found that the, the vintage Obermeyer always sells. Sometimes it takes a little longer. Mm -hmm. um, but I always get what I want for it. And I sold this for 70 bucks. And it's just a cool um, old ski snowboarding jacket. Um, again, that Obermeyer, if you've ever seen it. But there's some pretty cool stuff. What are you doing? I'm trying to get stuff ready for the haul when you get to it. Mm-hmm. Because you got to go real fast? No, because it's like <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> anyway, I, I sold this for 70 Uh So, yeah. So, if you ever see Obermeyer stuff, if it's vintage, um, it's a good brand. It's a good buy. Good buy. 
All right, next one for you, lady. Well, I just mentioned this in the show last week. Uh, it's a Pendleton Lodge shirt, red flannel, red plaid flannel McLean. Um, and it sold, it sold for $67. It sold yesterday. It is a new without tags type of shirt. It's so, uh, it's, you know, crispy and new and the person that bought it had the last name McLean. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was pretty cool. Very, very cool. That was a pretty fast sell. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, this is, I've shown this a couple of times, but I just thought I'd show it again. Again, I bought like a bunch of these during the black Friday sale they had online, got them all for 30 bucks a piece. And I've been selling the majority of the ones I've sold have gone overseas. I sold one of these for $98 to Australia. So I sold it for 98 plus shipping. Um, and then I actually took an offer for another one for $90 and that went to Guam. But that is, uh, that was free shipping because that's one of our territories. Um, so, but it was cheap, just first class. Uh, so yeah, so I keep selling these, like I have a bunch left, you know, and they sell normally for like $49 still on the website. So, I mean, technically if I wanted to keep selling them, I mean, that's kind of a lot of capital to put into, um, to put into stuff to sell it, but they do turn around. Like I'm selling them for 90 to a hundred dollars a piece. So, um, I'm still, I'm thinking I'm, it was a pretty good buy on my part. It was. Yep. Just toot my paid, own like, order. Something for them, I right? paid, they were on sale for $29.99, um, on Black Friday weekend. And so I ordered a bunch of them. Um, I was a little bit nervous that like by the time they got to me, the eBay was going to be flooded with a whole bunch of people having the same idea kind as of me. Kind of like the Monopoly Millennial. Yeah, game. pretty much. But it didn't happen. Sorry, Teresa. It didn't happen. There still aren't that many listings on it. So nobody really did the same thing. Um, I just happened to see it in one of the uh, streetwear groups that I'm in. And I was like, I'm going to buy a bunch of those. And I've been like consistently selling two or three of them every week uh, for close to $100. So pretty stoked. Woo -hoo. Yeah. All right, next one for you. Creepy doll. Um, yep. Creepy doll. She's not totally creepy, but obviously she's not in perfect condition. So she sold for $67. I paid $5 for her. She is a, a vintage Tony doll uh, from the 1950s. And that's it. I mean, that's pretty much it. She's just uh, keep an eye out, get to know your dolls. Vintage dolls can sell for a lot of money. This one was not perfect. I did not do anything to her other than... Uh, show her as she is. I'm not somebody that tries to repair dolls. I'm not somebody that tries to uh, uh, fix their hair or anything like that. I'm going to sell it exactly as you see it. As you can tell, she even has a couple flecks of like uh, mold on her. So how did you know she was, how do you know what kind of doll she is? Just how because I've been selling vintage dolls for a very long time. So but I if somebody like, okay, but if so, I okay, mean, so look at the back, you look at the back of the doll's head and okay. you, or you look at their lower back or the top of their back. That's where, if it's a doll that has any type of quality or is a good vintage doll, they're going to have some type of name. So what's the name there. on this? They so look this up is ideal, doll? ideal doll. They look up P90. And then that would come up in Google. Yep. All right, cool. Yep. And then there are various websites that'll give you more and more details, but yes. Thrifty Christie, they are creepy. I agree with you. All right. More military stuff for me, guys. I bought, I think I bought this. Uh, I'm almost positive I bought this in Phoenix as well. At one of the savers we went to. This is a new with tags, um, Air Force, Gore-Tex Parka. Um, it was, you know, like I said, it was new. All this stuff. What's great about this kind of stuff is that you could, it's really easy to look up. Um if you go right here, you can look up, if you just look up parka, all purpose environmental camouflage, that's usually enough. Uh, but there's also, uh, if you look at, you can even Google this whole stock number right here and that will tell you what it is. And then you can look at eBay and see comps and get a good idea of like what it sells for. I definitely priced it on the higher end um, because a lot of them were selling for around hundred, but I sold for 140. Now, one of the things I do uh, is I do promote listings and this one actually cost me, I think $10. Um, and promote listings to sell, but you know but what? You sold it for I sold it for 140 and I bought it for probably like around 10 bucks, you know, 10 bucks into promoted listings, but I sold it for $140 and selling it for a significantly higher price than a lot of other people are selling it. What are you looking at? I'm looking at the comment by heavy hitter. So thank you very much. So thank you for both for sharing your sales. I appreciate your transparency. I wish all the YouTube people would have the confidence and transparency you two have. Thank you for being credible. Well, we tried. That's that's kind of one of our goals is to be as transparent as possible. This is not yeah. a uh, glamorous business. It's not something that is a get rich quick scheme and there's a lot of work involved. 
And um, some days you have great days and some weeks you have great weeks and some months kind of suck. And we're going to be Man, honest, when we get to the, the summer other. and we, we still have to show those numbers. And if it's as bad as last summer is, then you'll probably see us showing those while crying. They might have be kind of blurry because the, the, the tears, the ink will have mm -hmm. run. Um, yeah, because last last summer was a little rough. We had some uh, rough JG, where was that doll made? That doll was made in the USA and it was made in the 1950s. Most dolls yes. were made in the, in the 50s. Yeah, made in the USA. <clears throat> all right. So yeah, so definitely, I mean, you can see, I'm sure you guys have seen all kinds of military stuff. I don't pick up everything military, but something like this, this Gore-Tex. Um, I pick up almost everything military. I love military. It just depends. It depends. But you can see like when it's something like this, where it's like, you can see all the seams are um, covered in like special Gore-Tex stuff. I mean, like I said, you can look it up. It's just like buying Nikes or Adidas. Like the style numbers are there. You can look it up. There's no reason for you to blindly buy things without knowing um, what the comps are. Uh, if, you, if you don't know it ahead of time, it's really easy to look this stuff up. Um, the answer is yes, Pam. If you get a return on a promoted listing item, they do they refund the promoted listing fee? Yes. Mm -hmm. They do. All right. Here you go. Speaking um, okay. of military yeah, stuff, speaking of military stuff. Really military, but. Uh, I picked this up. I don't even know how long I've had this, but I've probably had it listed at least six months. It sold for the price that you see there. 8707. Uh, it was on sale and it weighed just over a pound. So nothing super exciting about that. <clears throat> just made to look like military. Mm -hmm. Now, not all bombers jackets like this uh, sell for a lot. Abrex is one of the brands that's good. Um, another one is the Alpha Industries that uh, I've sold a lot of, um, but they're not always going to be home runs. I mean, this this kind of bomber style is really popular right now, so there's lots of really cheap versions that aren't going to sell for a lot. So don't just you know make sure you kind of get to know your brands and know which ones are better than others because some of them sell for like maybe twenty bucks. So yeah, Angie, the video is clear on our end. Um, sometimes that yeah, looks will like, have to do with yeah. your youtube connection or something like that it's not uh lots of not, people are saying that it's clear on their end so it's definitely um gonna have to be something something going on with your internet so mm -hmm. sorry all right next one for me woo, woo, woo. here's some etsy sales i did have a couple of good etsy sales now i've noticed so that for. well i'm gonna tell you right now oh. just hold your horses so most of the time it'll say right here how much it sold for it'll say it in green um and every once in a while you'll look at it and it won't say anything so that's when you go on over to the handy dandy flippertools.com uh created by our own joshua newell and you put, plug it in right here and it tells you it sold for 47.99 i don't know why sometimes the etsy thing doesn't show that but sometimes it doesn't and so this is a really good website if you guys don't know about flippertools.com um, this is a great place to go and look and free see. Free website, by the yeah, way. Yeah, it's free. It's a great place to go and see what something sold for. It also is great for, uh, if you go um, to the main screen here, you can actually go to eBay best offer. So anytime you're on eBay and you're looking at solds and you see it's like crossed out, it shows that it was a best offer was taken. You can enter in the eBay item ID or the URL and it's actually going to tell you exactly how much uh, the item sold for. Nice. Um, so actually I can show a little, let's see, I got one. I got one here. Let's do this one. So I said that I took an offer for $80. So let's take this uh, this I item ID number that's up here in the title. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to enter it in right here and see $80. Shows that I took an offer for $80. So this nice. is a really, really good tool for you guys out there because it's free. And if you're trying to do comps, and the only thing you see are ones that take the best offer and it like says it sold for $150, but you know it didn't actually sell for that much. You want to make sure you know what it actually sold for because it might be that they took an offer for fifty dollars and it's like definitely not worth as much as you thought it was yeah i mean um, i i absolutely love selling militaria in general they're talking about military uh mm -hmm. military i prefer vintage militaria and i actually have it some in my store now it tends to sell quickly so i don't keep it around too long usually but i love vintage militaria and not just uniforms but that's the type of thing that i used to do a lot of uh research on it was a lot harder I shouldn't say that it was a lot easier to find when I lived back east. I used to sell a lot of it. Yeah. Uh, 
Tara, how long did it take for me to start getting regular sales in Etsy again? You know, honestly, it took a long time. I was kind of like wondering like, man, am I ever going to really get good sales on this? And I was a little worried because it just wasn't picking up to like eBay's levels, which obviously eBay has a lot more um, people that, that shop there. But honestly, I can't remember exactly when it was, but it, I got up to a certain number and I was super active on it and the sales started rolling in. It definitely has slowed About way down. Or since my listing number. yeah, definitely slowed way down with my um, accident, and it hasn't. It, I haven't been able to catch back up again, so it definitely takes a while. And I went. I'm gonna have to see like what happens like if I get to a thousand listings, and it's not fourth quarter. What that actually looks like on on Etsy. But let's look at your sale on Etsy. Um, really, that's the sale that you grabbed. This was the one from today. No, I had another one. All right. Well, let's look. At this which... is the dumb one. It's like 40 bucks. You said sale today. And that was the one, the only one that was showing for today. So we're going to go look at your sales. I have a sale. that's pet those, the vintage Reebok. Oh, well, that said the 12th. Oh, it sold last night. Okay. Hold on, guys. Oh, so by the way, guys, if you're ever looking to see what something sold for, this is, you know, how normally it pops up here. Maybe it will this time. No, it did not. How much did you sell these for? 114. All right. Yeah. So those sold for 114. I paid $8 for them. Um, that was a good Etsy sale for me. Um, how many listings do you do per week normally? I do over a hundred. I believe Katie's about the same. Yeah. I think I do like maybe a little bit less than her. I bet I probably averaged like maybe 80, 75, 80 listings a week. Um, but right now, yeah, it's definitely way, way down. So and um, neither one of us drop our prices after a certain time frame. We have sales all the time, and that's pretty much there are certain amounts that we're willing to accept on our prices, and that's it. I, I never drop my prices. Generally, I drop yeah. them by sale. I do, but have I have that factored into what I'm willing to accept for yeah. something. I do have best offer on everything, and so if something's been around for a long time and somebody makes an offer, it definitely um, will change how low I will go. Because I'll be like, eh, I've had that forever, and they're offering a decent enough price. I might as well just sell it and get it out of the way. So, Lorna, what's up? I don't know why I just said what's up. That was embarrassing. I'm sorry I've embarrassed you. <laughs> Bring embarrassment <laughs> to our family. All right. So, I mean, this is the last one that we're going to show. Uh, I, I just want to show this because this was like a really good sale that I had um on the old etsy here let's look at the old flipper tools it's, it's not showing i'm gonna show you guys we'll do this one more time we're gonna go up here flip a flip 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 and we're gonna go to etsy sold price punch that in right there bam and i sold it for 80 dollars says plus shipping but it went domestically so i have free shipping all my stuff so i sold this blazer for 80 dollars. what's funny is i do not pick up this stuff anymore i don't pick up pants i don't pick up blazers for the most part, most button down shirts I don't buy anymore. Um, blazers are just a pain in the ass to me. Um, but it was a good sale. I had this listed for a long time and I think they could have gotten it for at least $10 cheaper if they had gotten it on um, eBay. But I mean, this is, it's a pretty cool blazer, but uh, $80, not too shabby. Not too. Not too shabby. All right. Are we done with the screen share here? Yeah. You want to quit bossing? Why are you always bossing? <laughs> because we boss up apparently lorna loves blazers yeah i don't i don't mm -mm. i have a bunch too but i haven't bought them in a long time yeah okay so i thought i saw somebody had asked a question about sizely um i can't go back so somebody if you whoever it was that asked that question about sizely if you could go ahead and re-enter into the chat they asked if we could show them how we use sizely as a matter of fact if you go to the sizely website Mm -hmm. Katie's video is on the bottom of the Sizely website talking about how she uses it. And we have done a video. She has done a yeah. video on how to use Sizely exactly. So you have to kind of scroll down to the early days of our videos. But if you put in Sizely in your search, you should find it. Yeah. But basically, here, I'll do the screen share real, real quick right here. Um, basically, I add it to my pictures. And so I will create, uh, I'll do, make the little Sizely thing and I'll save the picture and then I upload it to my pictures. And then in my listing, um, I always have right here, it says see pics for detailed measurements. And then if you go down to my description right here, I say see pictures for detailed measurements. So the measurements are all there. Um, What's up, Steve Rakin? So that's basically how I use it. Oh, uh, Steve Rakin is popping, popping in. Popping in to smash that like button. Let's stop the screen share here. 
What's up, Steve Reagan? Hey, Steve, I emailed you like five times. You never answer. What's up with that? What's up with that? Uh, She's referring to his post <laughs> yesterday about he's so busy. It's hard for him to get back to everybody and people are giving well, a shit about what's it. What's crazy is like we, we don't even have 6,000 subscribers. Okay. So we're pretty small time when it comes to YouTubers uh, and leaders in the community and social media and stuff like that. And let me tell you, we get a lot of messages. We get messages pretty much every day. Uh, I'm horrible at responding to she that. She really is. I really am. But if you want to I be replied, to, if you want to reply to, probably message me. Yeah, but a lot, sometimes it takes me a good week before I get back to somebody. I'm terrible. I know Casey, like he says he has it within like 48 hours, which is ridiculous because I know he probably gets a lot. But Steve has like over 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. Like guys, he has over 100 thousand subscribers on youtube he's got lots of followers on facebook uh i'm not really sure what how much he does on the other social media um, platforms but i guarantee you he gets a crazy amount of messages and he was just getting frustrated because people were he was getting they some, were giving him shit about some it. people who were like sending him really nasty messages because he hadn't responded to something but i mean i don't even know how you could possibly as one dude keep up with that many messages it's not possible uh, but apparently he's actually like hired some people to help him with that which i think goes kind of above and beyond because that's that's a lot to yeah but you know i get it so anyway thanks dude for stopping by um Oh, Canuck girl says she smashed it before she even started watching. That's, well, that's good. Some... It's like our down votes. They happen before <laughs> the show starts. So we should have some up votes before the show starts too. So that's awesome. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, yeah, Kara says that's why I message Vicky. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I'm a little better at responding. I can't say that I always will be, but I'll try. Yeah, you know, I. by the way, Kara, I am wearing your, your kitty pants today. I love them so much. Mm -hmm. I love them so much. My grumpy cat, grumpy cat pants. Uh, all right. So what do you think? Should we get into, um, should we get, should we get into some, some Holland, some Holland, some Holland, some Holland notes, Holland, <laughs> Holland notes. Really? I don't know. You said Holland. Maybe they Holland. Yes. Out. Uh, so you found a ridiculous amount of stuff. I had a really good thrifting, sourcing, estate sailing weekend. Mm -hmm. I really did. We, we went to, uh, no junk, no fluff. We went to three different estate sales. Now I said this before, I'm not as much of a fan of going to estate sales and yard sales just because I'm, I do really limit myself by only doing men's clothing. So a lot of like estate sales and stuff like that, it's, you know, I'll, I'm lucky if I find one that has the kind of stuff that I want, that I specifically want. So for me, it's more of a time management thing. It's like, is it really worth my time? But if I just go to kind of hang out with Vicky, then it's like, it's like a bonus if I find anything. Mm -hmm. So we went to three different ones. I only found something at one of the places. Yeah. Um, but well, they weren't garage sales. They were estate sales. Right. They were, they were probably, sales. probably dead people. So I don't think Con Marie had much to do with the downsizing <laughs> there. But I am super excited to spend some more time in the thrifts over the next few weeks because of all of you people doing this Con Marie, you know, challenge. Not you people because you're smart. You're going and buying up the stuff that people are getting rid of. <laughs> but in general, I'm super excited. What up, Justin that. Pacman? Um, so uh, now I did have some fun. I did do some scouting for you. Mm -hmm. I found a few of the things that you got. You I, did? I scored for you. Yeah. Don't make that fit. I will, I will be happy to point out exactly which items I helped with. I don't know if you're sharing any of them or not, but mm -hmm. there were a few. There were a few. Uh, yeah. The thing that you didn't bring up here because it's too heavy. That yeah, was your, I found that. Well, I was already I found looking in the You same had area. looked over there, but you, you were moving on. You were moving on. There were hats that you didn't, that you had gone you to did a garage. Get you didn't see the hats. I found the hats. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. What do you got? All right. So I am going to first talk about Christmas stuff. Oh my God. That's the one thing about estate sales. They price the Christmas stuff super cheap. Usually if you go into the garage, usually in the garage, they put the holiday stuff in there. So Yes, yes, I went. Yes, I went. Yes, pajamas. Katie went in her PJs. She I have wear pants yet. I have a. Uh, I have a couple pairs of black ones that we got specifically. They're my going out PJs. They're going out in public. PJs. They're going out in public PJs that she. Because I don't want to be seen with her okay. everywhere. But in rainbow cat riding but I, a Pegasus. But I do pajamas. wear. I do wear my grumpy cat cat pants to the store. So. <laughs> I just walk like three aisles in back of her. It works. <laughs> All right. What do you got? Anyway. So these little things, they're made by Hallmark and some people uh, will probably know what they are. They're called the Happy Topper, uh, Happy Tappers. And I got, I think there are five altogether, but I got four of them. 
Now, can you actually plug them in? I think they light up and you put, they have these little plugs on the side so you can hang them and they connect. Oh, okay. So, and there's all different ones. Anyway, so I paid $2 for these. Uh, I paid $2 a piece for them and they sell for up to about $100 a piece. Now, when you grab them, you thought... I just figured they were $25, $35 ones. I wasn't even sure they were Hallmark because they're not marked Hallmark on the bottom. Yeah. And then you um, looked them up and you were like, oh my goodness. But I was like, for two bucks a piece, I would have kept them myself if they weren't worth reselling. I just thought they were adorable. Yeah. This is another Hallmark um, ornament that I picked up. This one sells for around $35 or $45. That was really cute. Uh, it plays. It's the... It like... Let me see. Where the heck is it? I don't know. Why are you looking at me? I don't know. I just played it Happy yesterday. Ooh. Here with your <laughs> yeah, so it talks. How long is that going to be going? I don't know. No, I can't <laughs> shut it up. Sorry. <laughs> All right, and then we have these little ones that I've got to uh, change the batteries, and they're like Hallmark Angels from the Christmas pageant. It's never going to end now. It's not. And I have four of these, and again, I paid $2 a piece, and they're going to sell for about 75 or or 100 as a set. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, this is very personal skits. I don't know what's up with that name, but I appreciate it. Five pound super chat. <laughs> we're talking, we're getting some foreign money up in here, y'all. Super chat, super chat, just super chat day. Yeah. And full of cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, what day of these state sales do you go to first or last? Um, Sharon, it really depends on what day I have time to get out. Uh, this Almost always Fridays. Time was, uh, this particular time was on uh, Friday. It happened to be the first day for all three of the sales that we went to. Not entirely true. There was one, the one that I actually found my three items at. Uh, they have... Which is where these were at, actually. Right. We need to get on their mailing list because uh, the way they do it is Friday is their first like day that they advertise it for. But if you're on their mailing list the day before, it's almost like a preview day. Um, so I don't even know what we missed out on by not going the first day. Oh, I'm going here. You're going here? Okay. I'm going Go for here. it. Go for it. You're, just, so, you're sick. You're sick. I am. Anyway, <laughs> this cost me $5. Vintage personal massagers. I'm not talking like the rabbit that someone got from an Athena's home novelty party, but vintage personal massagers like the Hitachi, that type of thing. That's what this was based off of. This is from the 70s. It's in the box. I bought this for $5. It's going to sell for about 85 to 100. Panna braider. It's the Panasonic Panna braider. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even, you know, listen, I'm going to put gloves on. But anyway. They sell. They sell. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there's good money in these things. Don't overlook things in the personal cabinets or things in the kitchen or wherever they kept this. When thing. I buy one of these, I like to like, when you do, buy a maniacal, it. do a maniacal giggle as I go to the check stand because I like to make them feel really, un really uncomfortable. <laughs> Actually, I never buy them. Yeah, Kara wants to know if you tested it. No, I didn't test it. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Ew. You're not even going to plug it in and make sure it works? Well, I'll probably plug it in, yes. Yeah, so you're going to test it. I'm not going to personally test it. I don't know what you're thinking it. about. You're sick. You're disgusting. Ugh, nasty. <laughs> nasty. Ooh, a heated one. <laughs> anyway, buy them. If you find them in boxes, especially, if it's anything from like the 70s and earlier, they made those things. I don't know how they made them differently or whatever because I was like five in the 70s. So um, that's... They're good. There's good money in them. I've sold them. Mm -hmm. They sell well. Yeah, they do. They do. Well, you also wants to, <laughs> she wants to get it on layaway. <laughs> Weirdo. Uh, <laughs> Sonny, you did come in at a hot time. Uh, All right, is it my turn? Yeah, your turn. Okay. The first thing I'm going to show was actually something I had for last week's haul. And it was my it was my favorite thing that I got last week, and but I had set it aside because I was saving it for last, and then I completely forgot about it. So because I don't have like a, an awesome haul for this week, I'm gonna show it now. Um, so we've talked about this brand before. I got a sweatshirt uh, fairly recently; it hasn't sold yet, but I have it priced really high. I'm okay with letting it sit for a while. This is the the brand Johnny Blaze. Now this is who is it that, that's behind this brand? I don't remember. I Somebody thought was, I thought it was Jay Z. 
I don't remember. No, it's not Jay Z. That was a different one. But Johnny oh. Blaze. Uh, it's like is it Method Man or something like that? Anyway, somebody can look it up real quick and tell us uh, in the chat. But Johnny Blaze. This is '90s. Now I think the sweater is awesome. But it's a sweater. It's not even a sweater. This is a sweater. a sweater. Now I saw one, the, a comp for one that had sold, and it sold for way too cheap. It sold for like only twenty five bucks. But what was crazy is they didn't even have like yeah they said it was Johnny Blaze. But their keywords were terrible. Like seriously, first of all, this is like somebody mountain climbing, so it's super cool. I don't even know that. I don't know if that's like a specific mountain or not. I'd have to research if it's like Everest or something like that. But like, why wouldn't you have some keywords that say I don't know? Thrift Raider said Method Man. Yeah, see Method Man. So why wouldn't you have somebody like a keyword of like mountain climbing? Uh, so, you know, something like that, whatever, like the stuff, cause somebody who actually is like, maybe they aren't a huge Johnny blaze fan, but maybe they're like, but maybe really, they're a mountain climbing fan. Maybe they're really huge into mountain climbing. Mm -hmm. Um, and sorry, but some of those people who do mountain climbing as a hobby, uh, got some money to spend and it's somebody an expensive would want hobby. Exactly. Very right. expensive. Right. hobby. Sorry case. again, but I think this was an awesome score. I definitely paid up for it. It was sixteen forty nine. Um, I got, but I got twenty twenty percent off. I think because I don't know if we went on Thursday or not. I think I got twenty percent off. Um, so definitely paid up for it. It has not been listed because I haven't been able to do photographs of it yet. Uh, but I will definitely sell this for a minimum a hundred dollars. Um, I think it's an awesome sweater. Super super cool. Um, Mister Skits is in the chat. What? Busting out another. Five pounds, which since the dollar is pretty weak, I mean, that's like more than five bucks. I think it is. That's like a good seven, eight dollars right mm -hmm. there in U.S. American <laughs> and hot diggity dog American. In fact, I'm going to give that an American super chat. I'm going to do the Red Neckerson resales, even though he's not here, and give it a little bit of a yeah. It's very American of you. I'm just like flipping my guns. Super chat. <laughs> You're a freak. Uh, anyway, yeah, Johnny Blaze is definitely, it's a character, comic book character, but that's separate from the clothing brand, Johnny Blaze. Um, that's like a 90s hip hop uh, clothing brand started by Method Man, um, who is, isn't Method Man one of the Wu Tang clan? You're asking the wrong person. I'd have to Sorry. look that up. Sorry. I have no idea. Sorry. So, uh, Lady Loves BMC, I found two London Fog trench coats for $7 half price at Goodwill. Do they sell good, and how do I know if they're vintage? First of all, London Fog is very iffy. It depends on the piece. It really depends. I have found London that Fog basic sells stuff, well. The basic stuff, not so great. It yeah. kind of sits. But 7 bucks, you should still be able to make some money on them no matter what. Um, that was a decent price. How do you know if they're vintage? Uh, it's going to be based on the tag and the style. Um, it's hard to say. It's hard to say without seeing a photograph. Yeah. See, fade or faded? I knew it was Wu Tang. Yeah, not See, me. I know. I know my stuff, mm -hmm. kind of. You know. Anyway, um, then we went to. We did go to One Savers after because we were close to one. We were like eight minutes away when we were at the last. Uh, we were three and a half miles away. Yeah. So we were like eight minutes away. I'm like, okay, let's go. Now I'll tell you, I, while we were at that Savers, I hit a major wall because I was like, I get tired really easily now because I guess my body's in overdrive trying to repair myself. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I hit a major wall. Like I ended up only buying two sweatshirts, but I thought they were both pretty cool. So this one is Wisconsin. Um, I like the little badger. Yeah. The little badger guy. Uh, this cute. is a pullover hoodie, um, vintage. Uh, let's see what the tag is. This is a Russell Athletic tag. So this is actually probably '90s. If you look at this tag, so anytime you see the Russell Athletic and it's got it's got the little uh, eagle head or hawk or whatever that is um, in the R, that is generally vintage. That's '90s. Um, but this is this is kind of a retro. I don't know. If the, like it has a very retro, old school look to the sweatshirt itself, but that should do well. Should Lady do well. loves BMC. Why don't you post that, uh, make a thread in the boss Facebook group. I think you're in the group, mm -hmm. uh, make a thread in the boss Facebook group with some photographs and ask about the vintage tag. And that way someone can pop in and uh, see it. If I can't get to it right away, you'll get answers. Before. Sunny, that's a good question. Does it come with a brick of cheese because it's from Wisconsin? Probably not because this one would eat I'd it before I could get it, it in, before I could get it in the mail. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and say no. But anyway, I love this little hoodie. Uh, I don't know. I'll have to look it up and see what stuff from this, this school sells for. Um, but I should be able to sell it for 30 to 40 bucks. 
It's Cute. a great color. Great, great color. Now, this other one I got, again, I only got two things. So that almost never happens when I go shopping, but I was pretty tired. I was I was looking Retired. pretty I was getting pretty rough. Uh, this is a UNCF uh, the college fund all embroidered sweatshirt. This wow, is this super is rad. Super thick, like it's mm -hmm. crispy. It's crispy. This is pretty, pretty nice. Um, super thick, heavyweight sweatshirt. It feels like you know, like those old champion sweatshirts from the '80s. That's what it feels like. It's not champion, but it feels like that quality. Yeah, but this is the uh, this is the it's fully embroidered UNCF. So I guess that, that's the United Negro College Fund. Yeah. Um, and no idea what something like this sells for. I will have to see if I can find any cops. This is probably when. But it's vintage. That's really cool. Yeah. It's probably when uh, like worth points going to come in handy. Because um, when I, there's something that hasn't sold or been listed in the last 90 days, then there's not going to be any record of it on eBay. But um, that's when I will use um, my old worth point and check and it out it and see if I can find anything. But I think it's really nice. And it's like super cool because it's like all multicolored and embroidered. I think it looks pretty awesome. Um, this is very personal skits, bringing out another pound, <laughs> bringing out another pound. He what says, is going on? He or she says the UK rules. UK, UK, UK does, UK does rule. I we do, have, a, we do have several, uh, UK sellers and some sellers in, uh, quite a few sellers actually in Australia that watch us and a couple of different areas. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I do like the UK, even though I've never been there. I would like to go. I've never been either. So mm -hmm. maybe someday we'll go there. Maybe. 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 Anyway, thank you so much. Um, <laughs> Piggy Pants says, us Wisconsin folks are cheap skates, uh, but vintage wrestle is good. Um, somebody had a question. Fader, fader. I need some help with inter inter information on a weird vintage carpet Sherpa coat I found. Uh, are Fader, fader, are you in our boss group? Are you in fa on the Facebook group? In the Facebook If group? you're in the Facebook group, that's going to be your best bet. If you're not in the Facebook group, you can always send us an email. Uh, my email is down below. You can send that. And uh, I'll the share. Facebook group is your best bet because you're going to get more answers than just mm -hmm. us. And we will get to you, but it might not get to you fast enough. And you may get an answer right in the group. So I would post it in the group. That's definitely what it's there for. Post some pictures, state what you know about the item and ask your question. Yeah. Okay. And make sure you show the tags as well. Cause it, that's a lot of times that gives a lot more information um, than just showing what, the, what it looks like. Um, all right. Why don't you go ahead? Um, I don't have a ton of clothing items, but I'm going to talk about. You're going to talk about oh, Christ. <laughs> talk about <laughs> Christ on a cracker. Uh, okay. So I'm going to talk about two. One being this gorgeous mink coat that ooh. I picked up. It's vintage 1950s mink coat. It's super soft and supple. Ooh, um, supple. But it was supple. On, and it's from Bonwit Teller, which was a high end department store. Uh, and it was 50% off. I think someone was hiding the sucker. I don't know how it didn't sell at 25. I would have paid 25. Mm -hmm. I paid. What is it? <laughs> this is very personal skits. Another pound super chat. And then this time, the only comment that goes along with that is just UK. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyway, I paid like 13 bucks for this. I'm pretty psyched about it. It does have a couple of condition issues, but even still, it's in beautiful shape. I'm, I'm real excited about it. So 12, 13 bucks for that thing. Very nice, very nice. And then this one I picked up at the estate sale. This is just a vintage uh, dress coat, women's dress coat, but it is 100% cashmere. What makes it a dress coat? Uh, it's a dress coat because it's long and it's dressy. It's not a casual coat. Anything that's and long. You don't call it a, an overcoat or something like overcoat that? Overcoat is a men's term, man's term. All right, all this right. This is a dress coat. So very nice, very nice. Long, it's actually my size. Um, very cashmere-y. 100% cashmere. I paid $1. $1. Yeah, we went to two of the, the first two estate sales we went to. All the clothing was a dollar. Unfortunately, there was nothing for me there, but I love the pricing. There wasn't um, much for me either. I was just lucky out. to grab this one thing. I don't know why this was in, the, in there, but yeah. So imported cashmere. Mm -hmm. It's a really nice jacket. Um, I don't know what I'm going to price it at yet. Probably around a hundred dollars or so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the same estate sale. This was five dollars. I don't usually buy coach bags, uh, only because the coach market is really dried up and it's just not worth it usually. And they're still pricing them at like twenty and thirty dollars at Savers, and that's pretty much what they sell for. But I paid five dollars for this one because it's a large 
signature coach bag. It's the Alexandra bag. And it's in a nice color. And it was in really Amazing. good shape. I paid $5. It'll probably sell for about $65 or $70. Uh, um, the mink coat I will list for around $200. I would expect to get between $150 and $200 for that. Uh, nice this is very mink. personal skits. Just busted out. Another pound for a super chat. Another pound. This is getting ridiculous. Okay. I kind of feel like we're we're in one of those uh telethons or something like that. But, uh, you <laughs> you, you and know. Jerry Lewis? Yeah, pretty much. But thank you. Uh not even a message this time, but I'm gonna get oh, call me Mr. Skits. All right, Mr. Skits. Mr. Skits get we'll pay on there. All are right. Are you uh are you done? Are you have no, I have more. Okay, okay. I got your turn. Your turn. All right, so the one place that we went to where I actually found some stuff, and this is the same place where they had had a preview day the day before for everyone on the mailing list. Um, this one, I wish I would have. We would have been on the mailing list because I don't even know what I missed out on. I know, same here. Because we got in, we got in. We were pretty much the first ones in, and uh, so first I saw this really cool um, vintage. This is Dunbrook Clay Jacks. This is probably like an '80s. Uh, maybe late 80s jacket right here, and it's insulated, so it's nice and warm. This is just UNLV Rebels, um, and this is an Athletic Club, so I don't know. Um, you Which know, means it was Booster, as a Booster supporter, so it was a family so member. So, yeah, so probably somebody on the team. Yep, yeah, so pretty cool, in really nice condition. So I grabbed this up, and it, all of their stuff was $6. I think it was $6 mm -hmm. a piece. Um, all their clothing didn't matter what it was. And, and then we, buy, we go to a lot of different estate sales. We just go to estatesales.net. And if there's uh, a bunch going, then sometimes we'll go to some. Yeah. And then uh, I was really excited about this. This is a really nice uh, sweater. Now it does have a couple of spots on it, but I really think I'll be able to get those out. We've got some good, uh, what's that stuff called? Grandma's. Grandma's secret. Yeah. So there's a couple of spots on it, but this is a really cool sweater. And it's actually from 1990. And it says, Running Rebels, National Champions. Um, so a really cool uh, vintage sweater. So I grabbed that right up. And then, so those were both in one closet that were in there. And then I went to another part of the house. This house was huge. Went to another part of the house and they had a whole other rack of clothing. And I immediately, my little my little eyeballs immediately saw, uh, I can always see when, I, when there's like a satin bomber jacket because I'll see like the, mm -hmm. I'll see the collar. And so I went over and you went that right off of there. And it was really the only thing that was worth getting on that rack. Um, and this is like a pullover, uh, and this also says um, UNLV Rebels Athletic Club, and this is also from 1990 National Champions. Like, look at that. That's like such an awesome jacket in fantastic condition. It's an awesome condition. Um, another Dunbrook play jack uh, jacket. I don't even know that this was hardly ever worn because this has like this kind of paper tag on it. Which I mean, this doesn't. This really doesn't look like it. Once it's washed, those are gone. Yeah, it looks like they bought it and then they just put it in their closet. So, um, yeah, Jill's talking about. I'm gonna address a couple of the questions in there. Uh, JG, Jill is talking about who runs the estate sales, the business that runs the estate sales. If you get to know the companies, you're gonna know who has good prices and who has prices through the roof. There is this one company here run by, um, I believe, their uh, Armenian uh, family that happens to have their prices completely sky high first day and second day so i tend to if i if i realize who's at the estate sale i don't even usually go to their sales because their their prices are unrealistic they're far above retail um but the people that run them once you get to know who they are if you get on the mailing list and things like that you're going to learn who is reasonable about their pricing and who is not some people price clothing super cheaply because they don't want to deal with it and they just want it to get out mm -hmm. you want to look in the closets in the bathrooms as kara says closets bathrooms and garages those mm -hmm. are my favorite places to look we don't have basements here it would be the basement if we had basements here um but that's that's definitely who i'm looking for so i always go straight for the closets because obviously <laughs> i'm looking for clothes so yeah there you go yeah uh so i'm gonna look everywhere but uh, those are my first places are closets and the garage and things like that mm -hmm. so all right it's up for you um okay so this is something else that was really cool that i picked up at one of the estate sales it's this vintage 1960s it is called the relaxicizer so it is this quack medicine type of um vintage Whoa, medical well, sorry pieces. vintage medical devices are usually it's called they're called quack medicine look at this thing uh the older they are the better they are because some of them like from the 1800s and the turn of the century are like ridiculously crazy but if you look up relaxicizer 
you're going to find some ads for it and it'll tell you what it is. It's basically this beauty device. Do you ever see the ads from the 50s and the 60s with the rubber belt around the lady's waist shaking her butt? And that's supposed to be like making her lose weight somehow? Uh, yeah. That's what this is. It totally works. So it's got all these belts that you put around your body and you plug into this electrical thing. Uh, it might have been on Mad Men. It might have been. Um, so it's crazy. It has all the pieces, all the belts, all the cords, all the bells and whistles on it. I'm probably going to electrocute my ass if I try it on, but I'm totally you say about the one I, that goes on your face. Yeah, there's one that goes on your face, around your chin to keep your chin up. So anyway, everybody has probably seen the ads for these or at least heard of them. I paid 10 bucks for it. No, 15. I'm sorry. I paid 15 bucks for it, but it's in the case and it's complete. I think I can get about 75 for it. I just think it's super fun. Very nice. Very, very nice. What else you got? How many um, other things do you have? That's it. Just the stack of stuff. How about you? Uh, what about that back there? Are you saving it for oh, last? I have, yeah, that's for last. <laughs> All right. I only have three things left. You want me to show them? You want me to go ahead or you want to do your stuff first? Um, you want to do your games first? I'll do the games first. Do your games first. Mm -hmm. So one of the other things I always pick up and go to look for are kids' toys and uh, board games and things like that. So I really get into some personal items this week. I did. It's true. It's, it's true. true. Um, but I love vintage board games and anything from the eighties and earlier is kind of money and early nineties. So I picked up a bunch of kind of obscure board games at five for five bucks a piece. And most of them were sports related and in great condition. Um, this particular one is new in box. It's just a tabletop, um, pinball game that's vintage. And, uh, this is, I, I get about eight of them. And I'm just going to show a few. So all Ridiculous. three of these were going to be about seventy-five Ridiculous. bucks a piece. This particular one is about a seventy-five dollar game. I paid five dollars a piece for them, so I'm kind of excited about them. I like this stuff. And you didn't look? Did you look any of these up? No, I there? just knew. I just knew that even at five bucks a piece, I knew they were going to be thirty to forty dollar games. I didn't realize they were going to be as good as they are. Mm -hmm. I'm like every single one I think you ended up getting. Yeah, really they're good. all home run. They're all over 50 bucks. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh, this is another one. This is another $50 one. Just a Tyco Vintage B Ball Jam. <laughs> I love it. Yep. I'm going to play that one. Do we get to test them out? Yeah, we can test them out. I'm going to jam some B Ball. Uh, all right, so I got a couple more things here. Um, our friend Glenda came in from out of town. Um, she mm -hmm. was visiting. Her husband was like doing some sort of like uh, really super boring tax seminar convention, convention seminar kind yes, of thing. He's an, he's an accountant. Yeah, a CPA. I think. Uh, so she she came over and she actually helped with um, putting away all the Christmas. Her decorations. and Dorothy came and helped me undecorate the house on Tuesday, and it was amazing because um, as some of you have heard, my house looks like Santa Claus threw up in it for Christmas. It takes me about a week. <laughs> to get everything put up and to take everything down by myself was feeling very overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So they both came to help uh, take stuff down. We got it done in just a few hours. And uh, and Glenda was saying that she was talking about how she's kind of feeling a little burnt out on, on eBay and stuff. Even though she's still doing it. She's still definitely doing it. Um, but she was going out. She finds that when she goes to like thrift stores and stuff, she'll, she'll find something and then think of like who she could give it to to sell. And so she actually went like the day before she had gone thrift shopping um, and was looking for stuff for me to sell. So she brought me a couple of goodies and I was really excited about it. Mm -hmm. uh, so definitely things that I would pick up myself. Um, and what's crazy is both of these are from Goodwill and you guys have heard me rant and rail against the Goodwill here and how I never find anything good. I don't think she got them here. Did she get them here? I'm pretty sure she did. Oh. Uh, so she got a couple. Yeah, I'm almost positive she got them while she was in town. It was like she lives in Utah. She lives in St. George, Utah, but yeah. she used to live here and she just sold her house here last year and moved. Yeah. So well, it was the day before she was here, and she uh, she was had made herself available to us two days, um, two different days, and the day before was when she was shopped. Anyway, this is an awesome vintage '90s polo Ralph Lauren kind of Harrington uh, Barracuda style jacket, and I love the color. It's like this really cool hunter green, green. color. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's awesome. I always sell these. Uh, it's like a faded denim like a brushed denim green. Yeah. And so the tag on here, well, this says it was $5.99, which is crazy cheap. Again, I never find good stuff like this in the good I think she here. got 20% off too. Yeah. And I think she got, well, I think she got like her senior discount with it. Um, 
So I'm loving this. I think this is an awesome jacket. Definitely will be able to sell this. I should be able to sell it for at least like 40 bucks. 40 it's a size 60. medium, Sunny. Yeah. Uh, JG, I have never sold the Dark Tower game because I haven't found one yet, but I am aware of what it goes for. Yeah. I, I love board games, especially obscure ones. I'm going to sell anything. I'll sell them for under $30 as well, but most of them that I sell tend to be over 30 Yeah, and then the uh, another thing that she got for me is this Miller Lite uh, racing jacket, all embroidered racing jacket. This is not... This is not vintage. Um, as you can see, there's the dot com in the back, which it you know, doesn't completely uh, mean that something's not vintage because, I mean, guys, the years are going by. 20 it's years ago there. now was 99. So there were dot coms at the time. Mm -hmm. But most likely, when you see the dot com on it, most likely still it's probably not vintage. Um, so this is probably more Sadly, like. Sadly, it is getting there. We're yeah, old. This is probably more like mid 2000s. Um, but I love these racing jackets. I should be able to sell this for 50 to 60. Um, it might take a little bit longer and I'm sure lots of them have sold for much cheaper. Uh, this one, it was priced up a little higher, but she did get her discount. Um, so I think it was like 20 bucks. Um, but I should be able to more than double that. Uh, so that was a really cool, super awesome gift from Glenda. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the last thing I'm going to share, this is actually something that I showed already in a haul, but I wanted to show it again. Um, still isn't listed yet because I had to take it to get repaired. So this is this really cool King of the Hill, uh, like mechanics jacket. Cast, probably cat, somebody it's that worked probably, on the set. I would say it probably was a cast jacket because the reason I say that is because it's done on the red cap. Um, and usually when you find something, if it was like commercially made to be sold to fans, usually they, um, they have like their own branding on them mm -hmm. or it's a Fox or something on it. Yeah. I would say something like that on it. But when it's made by like one of these companies like this or like Port Authority or mm -hmm. I don't know, what are some of the other companies you can think of those good. ones that like are often used by companies to make uh, staff t-shirts or jackets and stuff like that. Then, you know, it's probably, I have something. one from the apprentice yeah. celebrity apprentice. So this is a King of the Hill one, um, so super awesome. Uh, but if you remember when I showed in the hall before, the zipper was broken. There was no zipper on it at all. Um, the the, all the little the stops down at the bottom were like all messed up and gross and everything. And so I actually took it to our dry cleaners and had them repair it, and they did an awesome job. And they put a metal zipper on it, which I was really grateful for, as opposed to like a crappy plastic one. And they completely repaired it. Now it did cost 25 bucks to get the zipper replaced. Uh, I think I paid like maybe $5 for it because I remember showing it to um, the lady at the register. I was like, hey, this is, this is the zipper's broken. Can I get a better price on it or something along those lines? Um, so I'm like 30 bucks in on this at this point, but I really think that I'm going to be able to sell this for like at least a hundred. So we'll see. Um, I think it's pretty cool, but I just want to show like sometimes if you feel like it's worth it, um, and you have something like a zipper being broken, it's going to make it not worth as much. It's it's worth the money, mm -hmm. the expense to go and have it actually replaced uh, somewhere. So there you go. There you, there you go. There you go. There you go. All right, guys. We got one more thing. This is probably the most exciting, ridiculous thing that Vicky got this week. She's pretty excited about it. What do you got? What do you got? Oh, boy. Whoa! Don't, it's, it's very close to coming all the way off. This is Herman. Poor That's Herman. what I've named him. Herman. <laughs> Herman's a fox. <laughs> Look at the expression on the face. I know, right? He, like this he, looks expression. Really, he looks really bummed out, man. It is a taxidermied fox. <laughs> I paid what you see right there. I paid 60 bucks for it because actually that was a fairly <laughs> reasonable price. Oh, my goodness. Martha Howard says it's scary. Callie. Oh, hey, Callie. Callie says it's so fluffy. Yes, it's real. <laughs> it's real. It's a taxidermy. So it's real dead is what it is. But his ears falling off, but actually it just needs to be re-glued. Yeah. Yeah. It needs to, uh, it's like, it's, but you can see, you, we can't really show you, you but can it's see definitely the part it where it, it was attached at that point before it just came off. So she should be able to get some really good. I can good, feel the glue actually around yeah. the edges. So it just needs to be. So it needs to be re-glued and maybe. Doesn't he look kind of sad? Yeah. He looks kind of bummed, right? Right? Oh. <laughs> like, I'm trying to do it. <laughs> They're not it's real like, eyes. They're glass eyes. Oh, I can't do it quite. I'm trying to, but man, those eyes, he just looks like. But I he, named him Herman. 
So anyway, it was 60 bucks. See, and, yeah, he uh, looks like he knows what's going to happen to it's him. It's really he's real soft. Sad. He's in really good shape, except for his ears, which I'm going to repair. And his ears are a little loose, like they, they're starting to come unglued. Anyway, I'm going to fix it. And it'll probably sell for between three and 400. See, what does the fox say? That's what I was saying <laughs> in the car the whole way home. Uh, yeah, the nose is probably fake, too. Uh, it's crazy, like, what? they're able to do with taxidermy because really uh, I think the nose might be real. Ooh! Yeah. <laughs> you know what? There was a squirrel too. And I thought she should get the squirrel and she should have gotten the squirrel. She decided against it and then had regrets as we were down the road. Um, but the squirrel is pretty awesome. And it's ridiculous guys. Go look at taxidermy. The dogs would eat him if we let them. Go look at taxidermy uh, on eBay and just look at squirrels. And you, first of all, there's it's somebody doing some funny. First shit of all, stuff. it's hilarious because there's somebody who's like t doing the taxidermy squirrels and may, you know putting like uh, there's one where it's like a hunter. There's another one. It's like they're like rowing canoes. Uh, they're pretty funny. But even just the basic squirrel um, sells for like a couple hundred bucks. It's ridiculous. So seriously, taxidermy animals when they're ones that are allowed to be sold. Um, go for a lot. It is mm -hmm. crazy, crazy. Yeah, the dogs would eat him if we let them near the near him, but we we don't let the dogs mm -hmm. near. Uh, just because it would smell it, they would know. Uh, shipping the fox. I don't know, Leslie. I'll let you know when I get there. I have sold a bunch of taxidermy stuff over the years. It's basically you're gonna bubble wrap the hell out of it and double box it. That's all. It's like yeah. shipping anything else. They're not really heavy, but they are pretty. Um, well, they're big. Fragile. That was big. They're so big and pretty really fragile. So, yeah. So, JG says which it. animals aren't allowed. I mean, I don't know, but I'm sure there's There is things. a list online. Um, there are some that are not allowed. I have to double check and see if that's uh, allowed to be sold internationally. That's a big deal. You've got to make sure that you can sell it internationally. If not, you make sure it's U.S. only. But didn't you say that you had, when you were on the East Coast, you had I had down, a, like, seal, a zebra, a seal. zebra head? Uh, I sold a zebra head. Yep. Like, I don't know. Coast, but I sold that I sold it locally. Um, it sold for like $1,300 or something like that. But those I don't think you can sell. Uh, I had a seal fur coat that was vintage and seal is one of them that's not allowed to be sold. I had to sell that locally as well. Back on yeah. the East coast. Some of so. the stuff it's, it's only allowed if it's vintage, right? Mm -hmm. Or not at all. Uh, I, I have to double check. I haven't looked at all the details, but it's been a while since I've sold anything, certain things like rats and squirrels and stuff like that. They're not really restricted birds, certain birds, pheasants, like Leslie said, they're not really restricted. They're very common. They're hunted animals. Anything common hunted about animals. Raccoons. I've never sold a raccoon, nor have I found a raccoon. So look and see how much they go for. I bet they go for a lot. Please do not send us a stuffed raccoon. It is not going in the house. I'll send tell us, you that right now. Send us a, if you find a raccoon, I want it. No, it's going in the trash is where it's going. <laughs> I'm going to sell it for about 400 JJ, the, at the Fox. Seriously, um, go look at taxidermy solds and you'll be, I think you'll, you'll be um, surprised. They sell really well and that's a super cute one and it's good color and it's uh, a yeah. good size so um the ear if you could actually see it it actually has like uh the head has like a really you could see like there's a surface of the 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 hide there's a hole that on the just, ear as well glued yeah on, it, it really is and it just came unglued it, it literally just came unglued so yeah it's not that i know how to fix taxidermy i posted this on something mandy was like mandy kennett it's like how do you know how to repair taxidermy i'm like i don't it's, it's just, just it's really it's, obvious it's very it's obvious. A, an it's obvious seam that just came apart so just gluing it back together is gonna be super simple um gator be careful cara, uh, cara actually alligator is one of the banned things on yeah. ebay you cannot sell alligator yep yep you gotta be super careful with that um all right i think that's it i think mm -hmm. we're good there you go. We even did a lot of chit chatting about nothing, and we're still only twenty minutes yeah, over the hour. I think we did all right. I think we did okay. I mean, Seriously, like I didn't we really had have a little over two hundred people watching at all given at all times, and mm -hmm. we're still only with eighty four thumbs up. Okay, so if you could just kind of like thumbs up on your way out. <laughs> um, I'm gonna glue it myself, JG. I'm not. I'm not gonna. Uh, I'm not going to let the buyer do it. I'll repair it myself. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it was glued together in the first place. It really mm -hmm. is just the seam where it was originally glued. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for coming and watching the show. We really appreciate it. Uh, we will be having our regular show on Wednesday. I think we might be talking about tax stuff. Uh, sales tax, Ooh. sales tax, not income tax, not income sales tax. tax, sales tax stuff. I think we're going to talk about that. Um, just because it's been, you know, it's people have been talking about it a lot. There have been some changes uh, with how they're doing it on eBay and everything. So we figure we might as well talk about it too, right? Um, so that's probably going to be Wednesday. And and then, of course, we'll have our Friday show. Um, but that's about it. I think we're going to get some more work done over here. Mm -hmm. I don't know about the rest of you guys. And we might go on a, a date tonight. We might tonight. actually go on we a movie. We might go to a movie. 
Yeah, we're thinking about going to see going I, out in public. There aren't like a lot of good ones out right now, but I really want to see um, the Mule. It's the Clint Eastwood movie. Mm -hmm. It looks pretty interesting. So I think we're going to go see the Mule tonight. Um, should be fun. And uh, anyway, thanks guys. Appreciate it. And uh, what you got anything else to say? No, no. That's All it. right, I got it. You got it. We'll catch you. On, we'll catch you on the flip side. See you Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs>